most importantly, a little project that I've uh, completed. Um, if you've uh, if you've seen on the Cinemasker uh, website and YouTube channel the past few months, I've done a, a few of the James and Mike plays. Uh, videos really really fun they do it every monday it's yeah, just a you? let's play let's player uh, yeah i'm a let's player uh-huh yeah um but anyway so there's a reason that let's, i let's play pat's a sellout i'm a sellout <laughs> so there's a reason why i was was there um not just to uh, you know visit my pals james and mike but also to uh do a video with my pal james uh james roll and that video uh by the time you hear this on iTunes or Stitcher or thepunkfight.com, you'll be seeing the season six finale of Pat the NES Punk, co-starring the angry video game nerd slash James Rolfe, portrayed by James Rolfe. And I'm exhausted because just just editing it, getting it out there, uh, just took a lot out of me. Obviously, you can see. And plus, we were filming video game years. You know, last Wednesday I didn't, or Thursday we filmed it. Thursday. Then it takes a whole day of my time just to... Good thing we can do that with our stupid caps on. Exactly. And, and then it takes me a whole day just to render those videos and get them uploaded. I don't just upload the raw files because they're huge. I have to uh, upload, render them all individually to MP4. And there's like 28 different files. Now we're in a video game years territory where it's like 25 subjects. Uh, you can't... You have to once you get to like 86, 84, 85. I think we officially went to like 25 plus subjects per year. Uh, so now I'm exhausted. I want to go back but, to the James and Mike thing real quick, though, because okay. um, I do have a question, because I've, I've known you the entire time you've worked with him. Um, what was your original in with working with him? Was it when you asked for a marathon video, or had you already done something with him before you had contacted him about doing a video for the first marathon? Um, I, I honestly don't remember. I'm trying to remember how this came I about. I met James at SGC 2010. Um, so way back, uh, it, was, it was the first convention I actually had a panel at. And at the time, I think I only had maybe 2,000 YouTube subscribers, so two years in. And I emailed James uh, on a lark. 2009, 2010. When was our first marathon? Because if it's 2014. 2010. That was 2010. This is the fifth anniversary this year, big guy. So anyway, it's the same year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, mm. what happened was I emailed him, and I said, Hey, James, we're both from Jersey. We're both kind of filmmakers. I film, I did film in college. I don't know people do. I did, I did a feature-length film. I did a couple of short films, even though it wasn't my major. Um, I said, you know, here's, I remember I specifically, I sent them like, um, my action 52 review. I think I sent them like maybe the black box game review. I sent them, definitely sent them Russian attack since that was, that had just come out. And that was my first sort of like big video in terms of like the huge Rob fight, which took like six hours to shoot. Nowadays it probably only take me a few hours, but I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I still don't, according to you. Um, that, I sent him flea market madness and he probably got like, a, you know, it gets like, he probably, he probably literally gets 200 emails a day from yeah. strangers. He, he responded to me after a, a couple of weeks, and I was like, wow. And he said, hey, he basically, he basically said, I don't, I'm not giving away private information, but he said, hey, I enjoyed your videos. You know, maybe we could, you know, uh, you know, just say hi to each other and meet up at SGC. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Right. So I remember at SGC, and SGC 2010 is not like SGC now. SGC 2010 was really centered on fans of the website. Now it's sort of grown to something like kind of like Magfest in a way. They, they get people from all over the internet. And so I remember James coming out of his panel room, and I literally like, almost walked into him he was like he just like walked out like and he was mobbed and, and he saw me and he said oh you know hey you know you can walk with me and you know hang out because he's getting mobbed by all these fans and I remember so, you saying that yeah it was just sort of those, one of those weird moments was like you know because <clears throat> i didn't know him so i was like you know it's always weird it's almost it's almost like when you, it's almost harder for me to it, like for me it's always weirder to be, make friends with a guy versus even trying to like you know hit on a girl to me it's like it's almost like it's it's more awkward uh, for whatever reason, and so because like, what's the what, where do you go from? Hey, we're we're pals. So we hung out, you know, and we we got along. He came to my panel, uh, my death slot, 10 a.m. No one was there. I remember it was literally like 20 people. My first panel, uh, Mark Carr helped me out, and it was uh, out of those 20 though, it was Pro Jared, uh, Spoonie, and James Rolf. Right. Out of the 20, not a bad you know company. You know, I was friends with Jared. Uh, we'd spoken back and forth. We weren't like we'd know as, as much. Uh, we'd know each other as well as we did now, but we 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 knew each of each other, you know. When that's I think when Jared basically started working on the website, when he moved, I think he moved out to uh, Texas by that point. Uh, and then I just communicated with uh, Spoonie Noah over over email, so he showed up, and it was great of those guys to do that uh, to give me a chance. Um, so yeah, that's that's how we that's how we met up. Yeah. So. Um, 
Well, it should be big for, for you tomorrow and for both of you. Didn't you say that you were, uh, isn't it going to be like a dual release? Yep. Yeah, well, by the time you listen to this, it's a spoiler if you didn't. Um, it's going to be split on YouTube between basically it's two reviews. Um, and so I really, I really enjoy writing the character uh, of the angry video game nerd. And I guess I, I, I'm not, if, if, if this comes across as like I'm kissing James's ass, I don't give a shit. Uh, because the character is ingenious, obviously. No one thought of a character like that on the internet before or else it would have been done. You know, a guy that's angry, yells about games that you shouldn't care about in theory because who cares about games that are 25, 30 years old? You know, nowadays it's like, oh, everyone does that, but no one did that before him. Sure. There's a couple of guys maybe wrote articles, but no one was doing that in video form. Um, so I've, I've had the opportunity to write the character about a handful of times, if you include the short, the shorts, the exclusive videos during the marathon, writing the NWC... Uh, World Champions video from three years ago, which we co-wrote, and then writing this episode that came out. And it, I writing to me, as I've said in the past, is always my favorite part of the process. It's it's what comes easiest to me. It always has these as a kid writing. Uh, I don't enjoy editing that much. It, to me, that's like a necessary evil. And directing, I, I do enjoy directing. So this was like a cool opportunity, and I really am thankful and great uh, grateful that James allowed me to like um, take the, the ABG and character in even slightly different directions. Right. Um, because it's like, it's, it's, it's great enough that he's going to do, use that character because he's very protective of the character and rightfully so, because it's, it's iconic. It, it is iconic when it comes to the internet. Like when you think of internet character shows, like there's really no one more well known at this point. You make an argument for people that are bigger on YouTube, like guys like PewDiePie, but that's not iconic to me. That's just a guy on YouTube doing, <coughs> doing Let's Plays. This is an actual character. So. And me. So, yeah. I, I enjoy writing for the character. When you when you write for uh, something like this, I'm not going to say it's like writing for like a Marvel movie, but you, you are entrusted a character that you have to work with. And so there are things you have to abide by when writing for that no, character. I, I no, think, I think that's a very apt description. I think you can use that. It is like when... A superhero gets passed off to another writing team. I mean, it's any time a character gets passed around, whether it's a movie or a comic yeah. book. I mean, that's exactly what it is. And you have to write the character within the boundaries that are generally accepted for that character. Yeah. That's why I didn't like, not to harp on, but that's why I didn't like Man of Steel. I didn't feel like they stayed within the boundaries of the character. Mm -hmm. If you don't stay within the boundaries of Angry Video Game Nerd when you're writing him, that's going to upset people. Yeah, and I guess I was lucky enough that, uh, let's see, I, I did the, well, the top secret episode wasn't was the nerd. That was just James. That was the first one. And then um, River City Ransom, uh, Sky Kid, which was last year's one. Mm -hmm. And then James wrote the Bubble Bobble short exclusive from a year and a half ago. Um, so I guess he knew that I could have the ability to actually write it. And know what I was doing to write this, I guess, feature length for the internet. It's like 17 minutes long. Of course, I plan to be only like 12, but it's always gets blown out of proportion. So yeah, it's interesting because it's like that. Um, there's a line you have to walk in terms of um, staying within again the boundaries of the of the character you're entrusted with. But then I wanted to do something at least a little bit different and explore areas that either um, either be, be, for whatever reason. That uh, James never wanted to explore, or just maybe never thought of it. I don't know, uh, but or maybe it doesn't fit his series to to go in different directions. Where I'm sort of like, all right, what what if this happened to the character? What if he interacted with with someone this way, and it's playing off of the Pat character? Well, when you, you know? when you split when you when you when it's a split episode too, you can play around a little bit more, and it feels less permanent, and you can do a little bit more with it. Oh sure, but but it's the same tone throughout though. Sure, you know, so it's it's it split down the middle uh, in terms of it. But um, um, yeah, I'm just I'm just happy. I think it came out well. Uh, the video from that we did in 2011 wasn't there was no review in it. It was more of a, a skit. It was just a, like a dramatic scene, really. You know, fighting over this old game, you know, and having it be destroyed. Well, this is more of a style of a blend of, you know, both I guess quote unquote YouTube worlds, YouTube series worlds. You know, those videos you never watch, Pat the NES Punk. So oh, fuck off. <laughs>